Hi everyone, this is Ashley from Court Reserve. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Pickleball Education webinar series. We are really excited to get to spend time um, talking about pickleball clubs and pickleball programming and, and all kinds of great things. So um, Werner from the Pickleball Zone is joining us today and we are very excited that he is here. He is a wealth of knowledge in the pickleball land. So thank you for coming. Well, it's nice to be here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we did this, we started this a month ago and we wanted to offer just education tips and tricks. Um, you know, we work with at Court Reserve a lot of clubs that are getting into being a pickleball club or they're starting pickleball clubs. Uh, some of our current tennis or, you know, country clubs, they're, they're, learning about how to, you know, do pickleball programming and how to price for things. So there's just a wealth of people on the call today. So, but what we really want to know first is how did you get into the pickleball world? Well, I had a golfing buddy who brought me onto the pickleball court. And um, ever since then, I'm not playing golf that much anymore. I just <laughs> got hooked like everybody else. And how long have you been playing? I've been playing now 11 years. Yeah. 11 years. Okay. And did you start out as a, as a 5 already, or did you have to come up the ranks? Uh, it was a 5 trash talker. But, uh, <laughs> it was a 3 maybe to start out. Okay. And, you know, like in all the clubs, I mean, we didn't have any courts. We had to sneak on, sneak on to tennis courts, bring our own portable nets. Uh, same old story, tape the courts. Um, tennis players didn't like us and we had to <laughs> lobby uh, the Ben Parks and Rec to uh, build us some courts and they didn't quite understand what pickleball is all about, you know, 10 years ago. And um, so we went, about 30 of us went to one of the, the park, Ben Parks and Rec meeting and we made a lot of noise. And we said, we want you to build us some pickleball courts. And they said, well, you know, two in this court of uh, two, two courts, this end of the town, two others at the other end of town and so on. We said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. We want eight courts together. <laughs> and uh, so they told us, uh, we give you the land. We have, you have to raise a hundred thousand dollars to help build the courts. So we went to work and we uh, sold um, naming rights to the courts for $5,000. So we got companies and individuals to put their name on the gate and okay. we raised $40,000 right off the bat. And we had fundraisers, a garage sale, we went begging. And three months later, we had $100,000 and um, went to the Parks and Rec. And they said, wow, that means we have to build them now. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so that's the story of how uh, Ben Pickleball Club uh, really got started. Wow. So is that what you consider now Pickleball Zone? No. So okay. then uh, all of a sudden all these eight courts were really busy. And we had 350 members at the Ben Pickleball Club. And uh, we went back and said to the Parks and Rec people, can we do the same deal? And they said, not in the next uh, five years, there is no money for pickleball. So then um, my wife and myself, we don't have kids, so we don't have to help them buy a house or bringing them, getting them through college. So we built the courts and we donated them to Ben Parks and Rec. Now, all of a sudden they have 700 members with no place to go. So that's when I started looking into building an indoor facility and that is the pickleball zone. It has nothing to do with Ben Parks, with Ben Pickleball Club, except many of those members who played outdoors in the summer became members at the pickleball zone. So we had a really, really great base to start out with. And anybody ever wants to do 
find a, a build an indoor facility, you really need to have a really good base to start out with. You don't want to start just from scratch. You want to have five, 600 people playing pickleball and they don't have anywhere to go, either in the summer or in the winter, wherever you live. And then they be, you know, they hopefully join your club. Wow, that's really good advice. I know we do have some brand new pickleball uh, clubs uh, joining us today. So that's, that is good information. So talk to us around the facility itself. Um, you know, how many courts and, and what that looks like as far as like the actual facility. So we are a little bit unique um, in that I have a partner who has an adventure park on the bottom floor, on the ground floor, a trampoline, ninja course, climbing wall, um, no basketball on, on trampoline, dodgeball on trampoline. And so we have a, a great base. And then so on the third floor, we have eight pickleball courts. And then, then on the fourth floor, we have actually a lounge and you can actually look down onto the pickleball courts. So that's a little bit unique, but um, uh, so you could, if you have an existing warehouse, you maybe want to, you know, convert that into pickleball courts. I mean, we are very unique in that you have to actually take an elevator to get to play pickleball. And that's perhaps the only place in the country you have to do that. Of course, most of our people walk up and take the stairs. Yes, of course. That, that I think all of us on the call today should make a trip out and visit with you and ride the elevator to play pickleball. <laughs> That's awesome. So you have eight courts. Tell us about the, the color scheme. I know a lot of questions come around, you know, what does that look like? The, the kitchen color versus the court color or the wall color or how does, what does that look like for you guys? Yeah. Um... When you build a, a pickleball court, especially if it's an indoor facility, uh, you have about four um, components which really are important. One is the, the floor, obviously. The other one is the light. The other one is the ceiling height. And then the other one is the glare. So starting with the floor, we actually have a cushion court. So imagine coffee grind. It, so we'd have recycled tire. Wow. They, they look like coffee ground. Yep. So they put that on. So it's a concrete floor as to start out with. Then there is a binder on top. Then there is a layer of, of this coffee grind, a layer of these rubber granules. And then on top of that is another layer of, it looks like Elmo glue. It's like a white cord, cord binder. And then you let that sit for 36 hours. And then you do this six times. And it's, it's like a cushion court, but the, the ball, the Dura 40, the Franklin ball, the Onyx ball, they all play true like they would do in an outdoor court. And then on top of that, of course, we have uh, the court colors. And we went with three different colors. One is the playing service. Uh, that is blue, then around, then the kitchen is a light gray, which is similar, the same color like the wall. So you really see the ball coming, a yellow ball or a neon ball uh, comes back best, much better than an orange or a white ball. And um, so we have three different colors on the, on the, on the courts and then around is green. So we have green around, blue for the playing service, and gray, a light gray for the kitchen. Okay, that's that's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, as far as you know, food and beverage, or a pro shop, or selling uh, Gatorades and, and balls and things like that. Do, what else do you guys do other than you know rent courts um, and have classes? So we have a, a players lounge. Uh, Engage Players Lounge. It's uh, Engage is actually a, a one of our sponsors, mm -hmm. and um, so we we can serve food up there. So of course, now 
with COVID-19, you know, indoor dining is, is closed in, in our state. Um, so we don't, we, we can't uh, really um, serve much. But in the past, we have been able to, because we have a kitchen downstairs, uh, we have been able to serve pizza and we have a barbecue, we have a beautiful deck. Um, we have, we sell Gatorade, we sell beer and wine. Uh, so after the game, people come up to the lounge. We do have a pro shop and that's, uh, I think that's important to have because you can sell, you sell a lot of balls, a lot of balls. Uh, you sell paddles. We have a lot of demo paddles. We, you know, different, different brands and some of them are sponsors. We have shoes. Um, which is very important because we have loaner shoes for people. If they come with the wrong shoes, we don't want them to go on the court and hurt themselves. So we actually provide free loaner shoes, but then, you know, they like those shoes and then they buy a new pair in the pro shop. So, and especially for um, new players, when we do an introduction to pickleball class, we give them demo paddles for free loaner shoes for free, but ultimately they come to the pro shop and they buy um, a pair of shoes, they buy a paddle, they buy balls. So it's, it's a, it's a moneymaker, the pro shop. Wow. I never thought about loaner shoes. That's a great idea. And then they love them and they'll, and they'll purchase some before they leave. That's awesome. I do see some questions coming through. And so we'll, we'll get to your questions in a few minutes, but first I want to talk about your programming, your classes, uh, your instructors. Tell us a little bit about how you guys do those. So if I may, I'm gonna talk a little bit about membership because yeah. we have members and we don't have 3000 members. We have 3000 people on court reserve, 3000 yeah. court reserve members. So we have about 215 annual members. And for anybody who wants to uh, start a membership program, I always strongly recommend do annual. Don't do monthly, because if you do monthly, like in, if it would be in an area like Bend, where it's beautiful in the summer, they would not become monthly members. They would not come indoors. They would just uh, uh, play months by pay months by months. So we decided to do annual membership. If they go and play outdoors in August or July, that's up to them. They already prepaid, but do annual membership. In my opinion, that's the most important thing because you can count on that. You know the 12 months income and the billing is a lot easier instead of having monthly thing, monthly dues. So I really encourage everybody to do annual membership, any membership dues. So we have a hybrid here at the Pickleball Zone. We have members and we have the public and we reserve five out of the eight courts are reserved for uh, member play. Of course, if they are not booked 24 hours prior, we can also use them for public play. And then one to two courts we reserve for lessons and clinics. And I think uh, people forget that uh, lessons and clinics are also very lucrative. If I look today at our court reserve, I think we have about eight lessons, so eight hours. And then we have match critique, there is uh, one hour. And I think we have two or three clinics. So altogether, we have about 12 hours of uh, lessons and clinics. And that's good income, especially if you have a fixed membership. So that's really nice cash flow coming in. And of course, you have to share some of it with the pros, but uh, you know, it's still uh, nice, very nice income. So what kind of classes seem to do the best or are attended the most? You know, we, we offer so many different uh, clinics and, uh, and programs. We offer introduction to pickleball. It's always uh, very popular. And then that 
that is of course very important because people are coming back. Most people are coming back. We have match play critique, so you have uh, four players and you have a pro critiquing them on their game. We have free and me, which is the pro plays with three other players and does also match play critique. We have certain uh, themes like thinking, of course, return the serve, what to do when you pop up. And so there's different themes to different uh, clinics. And it's, of course, always skill level. It's always the same skill level. I mean, that's the most important thing. Uh, you want to have, I think, 95% of our members, if not 98%, well, 100% of our members have been, have been rated. So, and then from the general public, I would say that maybe 90% of them have a rating when they come in and then you put them into the right rating class. I mean, a skill level class, a clinic, whatever it is. You don't want to have a two, five and a four row in the same clinic. That's just a waste of money. So um, when it comes to like round robins and open play, do you still direct people into the appropriate level for those as well? On the uh, round robins, we have um, uh, two, 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 um, two different skill levels. So it would be a 3.5 and 4.0 round robin. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, most players in that end up being 3.5 because mm -hmm. the 4.0 don't want to play with the 3.5. The 3.5, of course, would love to play with the 4.0, but most of the time the 4.0s are signing up uh, for the 4.0, for the 4.5. And then you see very few 4.5 players in that clinic. So, you know, it, it just works out that way. But again, most importantly is that everybody is rated. Yes. Now going back to memberships quickly, does everyone have, like in court reserve, you can do family or individual memberships. Do you guys, what kind of membership types do you do at Pickleball Zone? We do a annual membership and it is per person. Mm -hmm. If we have a couple joining, they get the 13th month free. So they pay exactly the same price, but they basically get about 10% off, you know, but it's, it's, not, it's not money, right? They just get a 13th month free. They get an extra month in addition. Do you have a lot of families with small children getting into pickleball? We don't seem to have a lot of, of families. We had some kids camps uh, and they are popular, but uh, you know, on the weekends you every now and have families uh, renting a court and it's always fun. So speaking of renting a court, how do you come up with uh, your court fees for if I wanted to come and rent a court? So renting a court, it's $30 per hour and you can bring five or six people. So you can, if you want to take turns, most of the people rent it for two hours and they come with five or six people. And in, then it turns out to be about $12 uh, per person if it's five or $10 per person if it's six. And do you find that a lot of people uh, do that or would they rather participate in programming right now? We have, we have both and which is really nice. We, what we do is if we have a round robin, then our members get priority to book uh, the round robin eight days in advance and the public gets six days in advance. And that's really handy with court reserve because you can, you can um, program it the way that members can sign up eight days. We have even Ben Pickleball Club members who is a really good partner with us. We give them an extra day. So they do six days in advance and then the public can do five days in advance. And so that really works great. And so public players say, well, I never get on because it's already full. Well, become a member and you will have priority. So it works really good. Yes, definitely. So your member rate for court booking is $30 or is that your public rate? Uh, members don't have to pay. 
Okay. Our members, they pay $980 a year. Okay. They can play seven days a week, every day, two hours, more if courts are available, more than two hours if courts are available. Okay, that's great, that's great. How do you market um, other than the, what we've already talked about to get new members or are you in the, the space where you can draw new members in? Yeah, I think it's mainly word of mouth. Like, um, you know, other pickleballers tell, oh, you guys, you should come to the zone. That's the best indoor facility um, and, uh, you know, great service. And it's just word of mouth. I mean, we don't advertise at all. Um, it's just, you know, it's a small, relatively small community. And there may be 3,000 pickleball players in, in a radius of maybe 50 miles of bend. And they all, they all you know, pickleballers are very, very social. Um, and they find each other. And many of the members bring a guest. And there's a special guest fee, uh, about 20% discount if a member brings a guest. And so uh, many of those become members. I noticed um, in the next couple of months, you guys are going to have a tournament um, where you're bringing, I guess, any, anybody can sign up and play. Can you talk about having tournaments at your facility? So yes, we try to have two tournaments. One is at the end of the spring before people go outside. And the other one is usually in December and it's open to the public, open to members. And um, it's usually around Robin. I strongly believe uh, because we are not, uh, it's not a USAPA rated uh, tournament. I strongly believe that um, People should have the same number of games. Uh, maybe the, the top two teams then play in a final. But if around Robin, when you drive 120 miles, 150 miles to go to a tournament, and then you're two and out, that's just not very nice. So at least you're guaranteed five or six game. If you're in the final, you have a seventh game. I like that too. That, that would encourage me to fly across the country to come play in your tournament. <laughs> Get my money's worth, right? Yeah. Now, when you do tournaments, um, do you do anything special for your members to try and get them involved? Or is it more about just having a tournament for the community? I think it's definitely the members, uh, you know, there's some of them are very competitive and they just can't wait for a tournament. And then uh, others, they say, well, I, I, I don't, I just like to play social pickleball. So I'm not gonna sign up for the tournament. And it's on the lower skill level, usually the free O's, you know, they maybe don't have a full bracket, but then when you go to the four or fives, you have a wait list, you know, so, and people are coming from Seattle and Portland and Idaho and from all over the, you know, the Pacific Northwest. So, uh, and, and it's just very popular. Mm. So, I think I'd like to take some questions just so we don't keep going. And, and we've got a lot of questions here. So um, someone wanted to ask, what method of rating do you use? We are a IPTA certified uh, agency. And um, so we use the IPTA uh, rating system and we have IPTA certified uh, raters, uh, three of our pros. We have actually one pro who can uh, certify teachers. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's our, uh, our rating system. And it really, really works well. Uh, we do uh, prep classes, which are very popular because we, we sort of run uh, the rating test as a, as a prep. So people will really know what they get into it. And then we also have an opportunity to tell them Hey, John, I think you're not ready yet for this test. Uh, you might want to wait a little bit. Or we tell George, hey, you're too good for this. You need to go to the 4 test. Don't go for the three five test. So it's really great, but it's also a business opportunity um, in addition to a service to our members and to the general public. 
very, very popular rating uh, classes. Not a lot of money to be made because you have to share some of it with, the, with IPTA. However, uh, a lot of people take lessons before the rating and they want to make sure that they pass and and everybody's a little bit nervous and, and so on. But it's, um, it's great because uh, everybody has a rating and especially if you don't play in tournaments, you still get a rating, an official rating. Right. Uh, the next question's around, it almost, this question's coming from someone I think that's maybe at a tennis facility that's trying to get into using some temporary lines and balls on clay courts. Um, do you have any advice for that? Oof, I never tried that, but I doubt that the uh, pickleball would be bouncing uh, in the right way. I wouldn't even know. You would obviously would have to use a very hard ball. It wouldn't be a soft indoor ball, but I doubt that uh, it would work on clay. Okay. Um, what are the most popular, if I wanted to start pickleball programming, what are just a couple of the most popular classes I should start with? Well, the most popular are the introduction to pickleball, and then we call it the 101, and then we have a 102 class, so it, which is the next step up. And so, um, and then you go from there. You just go into clinics, um, and if they, and then match play. Um, so I would say start with intro, then, up, then go to 101, mm -hmm. which is a step up, and then go to 102, which is a step up. And that's on the lower skill level, of course. The next question is around grants. Do you know of any available grants for clubs to offset cost to build or buy equipment for pickleball courts? I don't know of any other than the USAPA, but we now called USA Pickleball. They often have grants. Mm -hmm. I think you might want to look into the low in within your local community. Um, ask around with your park and rec program, they often have grants as well, or they may help you um, help you financially because you, you know, the demographic of the pickleballers are as such that uh, you have a lot of seniors playing. And I think every community will wanna make sure that the seniors have something to do. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got another question talking about court surfaces. Um, how would you go about finding a company that, that can do pickleball court surfaces specifically, like you were mentioning? So there are several companies out there. Um, there's tennis cushion courts, for example, who built our courts, but he has also done um, uh, tennis courts for Serena Williams and basketball courts for LeBron James. And, but there are several companies out there. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, um, but it is, especially indoors, it is um, very durable. The only problem is that uh, the players like it so much, they wanna stay longer than the two hours because they're not hurting, their joints are not hurting. So that's the bad thing. But it's a good thing, you know, so. That's right, yeah. it's a revenue maker. <laughs> How hard was it for you to incorporate a beer and wine license? That was very easy uh, because it's a soft license. It's not the hard liquor license. So beer and wine is very, to get that beer and wine license is very easy. You just need to follow the protocol, protocol with the servers. They need to be, you know, they need to have their license and um, you know, not just not need to follow the guidelines they, uh, the department sends out. What's a good rule of thumb to revenue split with your pros for lessons and clinics? That depends very much. You know, are you providing insurance? Are you providing all the teaching material? Are you providing the balls? The, the, the baskets, the teaching baskets, the ball retrievers. 
Are you doing everything on court reserve for them? Uh, which we do and we love it. Um, so then it's maybe better to put them on an hourly rate, rate, rate and uh, rather than a, a split. And I can maybe, I take that maybe offline. That <laughs> the yeah, yeah. Or the hourly rate. So right. anybody can actually, I'm always like to help pickleballers because pickleballers help each other. So you, you feel free to give them my email address. Okay, that's great. How many uh, full and part-time staff work to run your eight court facility? That's a good question because I was totally uh, un un unprepared for this. I thought, oh, just sort of a part-time employee, you know, they have to get the people on the court and then they walk away and, and then they can come back two hours later and, and so on. But no, it is a full-time job. One person has to be there because the phone is ringing. They have to go to the pro shop. They have to, as people coming back in, the next group is coming in, the next 32 players are coming in. Uh, half an hour earlier, you have to check them in, uh, answer questions, hand out loan or shoes, demo paddles, uh, it's a full-time job. Sometimes we have two people there during rush hour. So, and then we have the round robins and we time the round robins. So we have to help them. We have to set up the round robin sheets. So I was really a little bit naive at the beginning, but uh, we soon learned that we have to have it fully staffed. So there has to be one person there at all times. And so we actually, we actually only open the lounge in the evening and have an extra person there because it just doesn't make sense to run and, and somebody can run up and, and serve the beer quickly, but it doesn't, ma it doesn't make sense to have somebody in the lounge full time. So mm -hmm. at least for us, it doesn't make sense, but you need to have one person at the reception and the phone rings a lot, you know, which is good. That's right, dollar signs when the phone rings. Yep. <laughs> How do you sell classes? Are they packaged or do you sell them individually? And can you tell us what your class prices are like? Okay, so we sell lessons for $60. That's lessons. So it could be, if it's four people, they pay $15 each. If it's one, it's $60. They all sign up on court reserve. They all prepay. There's a $24, a 24 hour cancellation fee if they don't show or cancel unless like last week it, because of snow, then of course we give them a, a, we give them a refund. Mm -hmm. uh, clinics are about $18 per hour and usually we limit it to five people per court uh, because often you have a no-show and then it is, then we have four. If you have less than three people, we cancel the clinic because we don't have one and two rent basically using a court and a pro that's financially not viable. Mm. So you do like to do you, would you cancel the class if there was less than? Uh, that's correct. We would, uh, we would let them know 24 hours and say, we only have two people sign up, but often we contact some other people and say, Hey, we have room on the, on the free five uh, match critique, do you want to play? And people, oh yeah, that's great, you know. So <laughs> we, that's uh, what the person at the desk is doing too, looking, uh, helping people find a game and so on. Okay, that's good. Um, so how do some of your members meet other players at their rating skill, like at your facility or in the Ben community? Yeah, that's a good question because if you have a, a new member who just moved to Bend, um, we really try to help them. And the round robins are the perfect thing, perfect vehicle. So we have maybe three courts we take. So we three courts, we have a 12 player round robin, but we take 14 max. And so pe two people have to sit out for one game. But because the games are timed to 14 minutes, they won't have to sit out a, a very long time. But it gives new members an opportunity 
to meet other members in the, the same skill level. We also have challenge card play in the evenings. Um, so we have different skill levels, different courts are set aside for different skill levels. Tonight, for example, we have play with the staff and that's very popular. I think all we had, I think seven or eight courts are full. They all want to play with the staff. And so it's the pros are out there and our regular staff. So we maybe, maybe have eight staff members playing and the members and the general public, they just love to play with the staff. And so that's a, a, a good suggestion for anybody who has a, a pickleball club, you know, play with the staff. Yes, very much. Um, talk to us about liability insurance um, for your club. We are fortunate that we have a trampoline park below us. And that insurance is a lot more than pickleball, but we are, <laughs> but we are included in that. So I really, and my partner does all the insurancing. So, but yes, you need to have liability insurance. Okay. You just need to go to an insurance broker and get a few quotes. Um, so you don't really do any advertising um, in your club, but do you allow people to hang banners or pay for sponsorships inside the club? For money, yes. <laughs> Actually, that's good business. Um, when we built the pickleball zone, and if you go to our website, you will see it's a, a huge building, uh, 55,000 square feet. We had to, the city required to have big windows, so it looks like a nice building. Big windows create big glare. And what do we do with the glare? Did we want to do window coverings and electric blinds or whatever? I came up with the idea, how about putting up some banner sponsors? So we are, all our windows are, com, are covered by advertisers and they are paying for it or it is in trade, you know, so be it uh, the paddle manufacturer, be it, uh, you know, we take paddles in trade instead of cash. There's no reason they pay us cash and we pay them cash for the paddles. So we may as well do a trade, trade out. That's a great yeah. idea. Um, again, uh, uh, with the glare and, and the ceiling height, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, did you pick out specific lighting or your ceiling height for the right amount of light for your courts because of that glare of the large windows? Yes, that's um, lighting is really very important. And especially if you convert a tennis court uh, into pickleball courts, um, your baseline on a pickleball courts are usually way behind the tennis court baseline because you're trying to put four, four tennis courts onto a, a, sorry, you're trying to put four pickleball courts onto a tennis courts. So your baseline of the pickleball courts is far behind uh, the, the tennis baseline. However, if you build it from scratch, you, you, you don't have that, that problem. We had a lighting company uh, come uh, to our place and they, with computer, they could uh, tell us exactly what lumens we have to have. Um, we wanted to have the same light in the corner of the pickleball court than we had by the kitchen and at the other end. And we have 72 eight foot LED light in our facility. And I remember each light costs about $685. However, they should last 10 years for sure. And we can take video lessons. It's so clear. We can broadcast tournaments. Uh, it's really high definition. And you don't want to save money on the lights because, and these LED lights, of course, they also use very, very little energy. And there is a warranty, it's 10 years. So don't, don't uh, be cheap on the lights. You get what you pay for. Correct. <laughs> 
Well, again, uh, we're talking with Werner from the Pickleball Zone in Bend, Oregon today. And uh, do you happen to know of any other names of court flooring companies? You mentioned just one, but did you kind of go through a process and pick this one or you already had kind of a relationship with them? I had a very good relationship with him because he built the outdoor courts, which we donated to Ben Pickleball Club. And um, he is a very, has a very small company, and, uh, but he travels all over the country. He has done so many courts at, at colleges, at universities, at military bases. He's the best in the business. And uh, he, he, as I said, he travels all over the country. So you only have indoor courts, um, but you have some experience, of course, with your outdoor courts um, with Ben Pickleball. So talk to us about the difference in taking care of those courts, keeping them clean or, you know, having to maybe take care of weatherizing them, things of that nature. So outdoor um, at Ben Pickleball Club, which I was very much involved, was on the board um, for many years before I built the indoor facility. We had a really great, um, we had a great membership there and lots of volunteers. We had a maintenance crew and they were washing the courts um, maybe every three or four weeks with uh, brooms and uh, the, the hose was actually hooked up to the broom and washing those cords. They were blowing off the cords every day. Uh, the cords got a lot of uh, play. They have to be maybe reserviced every, reserviced every four, three or four years. Uh, you could see wear and tear at the kitchen. You could see wear and tear uh, at the baseline. Um, those courts are built on asphalt. Um, so some other courts are built on concrete. Um, so that's the indoor, in, uh, the outdoor maintenance. Indoor, we, maybe once a month, we have to wash the courts with a, with a court scrubber machine. And, uh, you know, they, we suck up the, with the vacuum, we suck up the water. And we just walk behind the machine, and it's uh, then it's clean again. Uh, there is obviously no, no, no uh, need pine needles <laughs> coming indoors or or anything like that. So you you and we ask people to wear their street shoes to the court to the changing room, and then switch into uh, their court shoes, so they don't bring the dirt down to the courts. Do you have a locker room? Do you offer lockers or, or what kind of area, like cubbies, like? Yeah, we have lots of cubbies. We have cubbies for everybody who wants one. And then we have a shower, two showers, one for the guys, one for the ladies and changing rooms. So, yeah. Do you charge for lockers? We do not charge for lockers. Uh, if somebody wants to buy a, a lock, we sell them a lock, but we don't charge for lockers. And talk to us really around uh, flooring costs. Do you have like a, an estimate of what flooring on the inside and then quartz on the outside costs these days? I would say the indoors was about almost 80,000, so about 10,000 per court and outdoor you can maybe do it easily for 4,000, so double. Okay, that's good to know. But um, indoor, you know, indoor, we don't have to resurface them every three years or four years. So you, uh, long-term, it's like with the lights, you know, you make a huge investment up front, but then you have the best of the best. So we've got a couple more questions. Um, do most of your players that belong to the club want more tournaments to play in or would they rather participate in weekly programming? I think uh, weekly programming because players have opportunities to go to tournaments and those players who wanna play in tournaments, they don't mind traveling a little bit, even out of state. I mean, we have, uh, 
one couple, they're going to the US Open in Florida and that's right across the country. And there might be more people from our, from our members. But the people who play in tournaments, they go from tournament to tournament, you know. And, but uh, I would say 80% to 85%, they prefer the weekly play. So what do you see as the, the next things for pickleball? Um, it's becoming so popular. There's so many, every time we go to the courts, you know, we're seeing new people play pickleball. What's next in the pickleball world? <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, I think it's just like, you know, I would say if you build it, they will come. You know, it's just uh, incredibly um, how the sport is growing. Um, COVID, of course, has been not good for indoor, but has been great for outdoor. I know that Ben Pickleball Club during last summer, they added 200 new members. You know, that's just because uh, they people felt safe playing outdoors. And, um, you know, so it's, it's continued to grow. Yes, agreed. Um, we have a question around revenue. Like, can you give us some percentages around like an annual revenue versus general public and then versus clinics? Well, so the annual revenue, the annual member thing is obviously the bread and butter, butter. And then, but you get that up front, the $980. So don't spend it all at once. And then you get the revenue from the, from the lessons and clinics. And that would maybe be about 20%. And then maybe the pro shop, maybe single digits, but it's still a nice, uh, nice revenue. Uh, the banners, uh, depending on, you know, now with COVID, it's a little bit more difficult to go to the sponsors and say we need more money. Uh, so it's all a little bit more challenging. Uh, there's companies who are obviously not doing well. And then there are other companies like RV companies, they are, you know, going gangbuster. So um, what was the last thing? Uh, clinics. Mm -hmm. and Clinics and lessons, I think we did. Uh, general public is maybe about, I would say maybe 15% of the, of the budget. So it is just really nice to have uh, a hybrid situation with annual members, with uh, the general public, with uh, lessons and clinics, but you need to have enough courts. You know, you can't have 700 members and eight courts and then expect to do clinics and lessons. Or you can't have four courts and 200 members and expect to do clinics and lessons. So you need to be careful. And ultimately we need to cap our membership. Uh, I think it cannot be more than 250 for um, eight, eight courts. So that's good. So you're saying that based on your experience, eight court facility really needs to cap around 250 memberships. If you want to offer programming lessons, clinics, things of that nature. I would say so. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. And you, again, uh, we had another question, just confirming when, when you're a member at your organization, they don't pay for court rentals. Uh, but they do pay for classes and clinics, correct? That is correct. So they get seven days a week, two hours a day. And they, the round robins, challenge court, everything is free. But the minute there is a teacher involved, mm -hmm. clinics, match play, critique, uh, ball machine, they pay. How do you keep players engaged and knowing what's going on at the club? Listening to them. So, I mean, you have 200 players and of course, many of them have suggestions, you know. <laughs> we have a large box for suggestions with a thank you note on it. Um, no, we listen to them. I think we play with them. 
And they say, you should try that. We did, you know, last winter when I was in the desert, we did that. And so we tried new things um, and engaged them. And, you know, when, I, when we started out, I thought that, oh, members will just reserve a court and the same four people will play on the same court all the time. Not so much. Members like us, for us to put together round robins, challenge court, games, whatever we do, but they, they don't want to call around necessarily and find three other people to play. They know on Thursday morning at eight o'clock, the four O's play, you know, in a round robin, they sign up and everybody needs to sign up. And court reserve has been really, really good for that. Because, and especially during these times where we need to do contact tracing, we know exactly who was playing on court four on Thursday morning at eight. Or if it's a round robin, we know those 14 people they played on court five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. And we know that. We know who was in here because they all need to check in, not only sign up, but we check them in and the public needs to pay. So um, court reserve has been really great for, for many, many things. From also for the other day, I needed to email people and I didn't want to email the whole 3000 mailing list. And I just thought, okay, I'm going to mail to people who have been at the facility the last five months. Okay. I know they, they're not worried about COVID that much. So I'm going to mail them. And uh, it was very easy just to put in the date from when on, select public, select members, select whatever you had, and then shoot the email out. And it went out to 900 people who I knew they were here the last five months and not to the 3,000 who haven't been at the facility maybe because of COVID. So that was great to do it with court reserve and I don't think I could have done it without it. Mm, we'll pay so, you for that statement later. <laughs> so, so Tim, if you listen, don't get too proud, okay? <laughs> right. Uh, we've got a couple more questions. What percentage of the courts are booked daily? So, the member courts, uh, five, from, five of the member courts, they book daily. Um, and people have a chance eight days in advance to book it. And then, of course, we have the round robin. So today, um, so hopefully, you know, they're all full. Today, I looked this morning at our court reserve. And I think we have three open courts all day long or maybe an hour and a half. So, which is really nice, you know, so everything else is booked. And uh, again, I think if you train the people to book early, you know, the early bird catches the worm. So they get, they get in there. And um, so, yeah, so I would say today about 90% occupancy at least, if not a little bit more. And you can always use that great court reserve court utilization report to see that too. So right. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions have come in around uh, how do you estimate a monthly like operational cost? Is there, you know, your utilities, any advice? Because our, our building is, uh, has a multi-sport building, you know, I can't really um, break out the pickleball component. There are maybe other clubs like House of Pickleball, which is a designated pickleball facility. Um, they can maybe answer that question a little bit better. We uh, have four floors, a lounge, a cafe, uh, adventure park, and then eight pickleball courts. So, you know, the heating is in all four floors. And so it's really difficult to uh, allocate 
exactly uh, the exact amounts for overhead and so on. All right. Any last advice, tips or tricks um, before we go today? I would think that if you have an opportunity to start from scratch and build a new, new facility or new pickleball courts, make sure you have enough space on the baseline, from the baseline, from the sidelines. Don't save two or three feet. It's just not worth it. And um, if you have an existing building and you have an old warehouse and so on, make sure you have enough ceiling height, at least 20, 22 feet. We have 25, which is a little, little bit of a luxury, but you should have at least 20 feet um, and not just over the center. You also need to have uh, 16 to 18 feet behind the baseline so that you know you can hit it high. Um, we have nets uh, hanging from the ceiling as core dividers instead of a fence and uh, they work really great for us but again we have about eight feet on either side of the base of the sidelines so uh, there's ample room. Six feet would be the absolute minimum. Uh, so eight feet is better. And uh, if you do an existing building, it's maybe not possible. Uh, but if you start from scratch, again, don't, uh, don't save money by not uh, making it a, a, a square, one square, one foot smaller. Right, right. So after today, uh, all of our, uh, you know, participants today, um, just know that we will put this recorded webinar out on the Court Reserve YouTube channel. And uh, if they wanted to maybe follow up with you, Werner, about any additional questions, could they just call out to the Pickleball Zone in Bend, Oregon and ask for you or what's best? Best would be an email to me. And uh, it's Werner at pcband.com because I'm not, I'm right now in California recuperating from hip, re hip replacement surgery. So I'm not gonna be at the pickleball zone for another few weeks. Well, thank you again so much. This has been a great webinar. We wish you a speedy recovery um, because we're all coming out to Bend, Oregon in a couple months to play in your, in your tournament. So thank you again. Yeah, I know Tim wants to play for money, but not this year. Sorry. <laughs> hey, everybody, take care. Join us next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.